a mysterious hooded figure is draining the life force from young village girls, and Captain Kronos, a renowned vampire hunter, is called in by an old friend to destroy them. This is a Hammer movie that came out in 1974. When most people think of good Hammer movies, they think of the ones from the mid-50s to the mid to late 60s. So by the time this one came out, most of them were not very good. But this is one of the ones that I think stands out from the later period. When you first said you wanted to watch Captain Kronos, I immediately thought of some sci-fi time-traveling space thing. Yeah, they clearly chose that name because it's evocative, but it's not evocative of what you actually get. And it's also very comic booky, and I feel like the movie feels almost like it wants to be a superhero movie in some ways. Kronos even has a cool superhero logo on all this stuff. Right at the beginning of the movie, we get our introduction of the mystery cloaked figure that is leaving these young girls aged and dripping blood from their mouths. We immediately get Kronos' introduction, doesn't waste any time, and even though it does the sort of typical horror movie thing where you get new characters that go out into the woods again and get attacked, it doesn't happen so many times that it gets boring and it manages to maintain the mystery and keep it interesting. But at the same time, they do introduce the idea of vampires almost right at the beginning. Vampires? Oh, come now, Doctor. You had already reached the same conclusion. For a while, send for us. It's not like it takes half the movie before they find out that there are vampires. The movie has a cool main theme that manages to sound like a horror movie and a superhero movie theme at the same time. And it builds a good sense of urgency. The music does a great job of setting the mood, and it's way better than I expected for this movie. Just like with Evil Dead, there are times when it sounds very similar to the Bernard Herrmann Mysterious Island score. Since we're in the topic of sound, the actor who plays Captain Kronos, his accent was deemed too thick, so they had somebody else dub him, and the dubbing was actually really good. It's a time to think, time to plan, and a time to act. And that time will come soon enough, don't worry. If you want to see the opposite of good, you can watch Slugs. That's terrific! Great! You know you'll never regret it! Part of what makes this movie better than a lot of the other Hammer movies from the period, it doesn't feel like it has any padding to it. Everything feels like it serves the story or serves the mystery. There's no overly bloated explanations of stuff. There are some expository scenes, but they're really interesting scenes where you actually want to know what the characters are talking about. Like when they're talking about how different vampires work and different ways to kill different types of them and stuff like that. It is commonly supposed that a vampire attacks in only one way by biting the neck and draining the victim of blood. But that's true. The girls you spoke of, they were not drained of blood, but of youth. Which is cool, because the movie could easily have been just another generic vampire movie, but they put more thought into it. Do you know how much of what they're doing, like putting the toad inside of a box, is actually related to vampire myth and folklore? And how much they just made up? No, that's a good question. If a vampire should be strode, close to the grave of a dead toad, then the vampire life shall give, and suddenly the toad shall live. It's an old folk rhyme, and like most of them, there's a grain of truth in it. And something else I really liked is they don't talk when they don't need to talk. I really appreciated that. You'll have whole sequences where nobody says a word, and it works perfectly just by their actions. The acting in this movie is good all around. The important characters and even the side ones sometimes are all unique and well-defined, even if they only show up for a little bit, like Caro. They usually have some single defining characteristic, and their acting and even their clothes reflect their uniqueness. That blindfolded woman in the tavern? Yeah. Oh, I was waiting for her to do something. Yeah, but it was cool. Like, it was just, it just felt like a cool little weird detail. It seemed very comic booky. Yeah, in a good way. That guy that hired them was so weird. Yeah, but again, he didn't come back, but he was cool. Yeah. He was a comic booky weird guy. Even Caro, I thought Caro was going to be a recurring obstacle. Kronos is clearly intended to be a character that you look at as being cool, but they don't overdo it. He never comes off as too arrogant. He's intelligent. He's capable. And he lives by his own rules. <laughs> <laughs> 
He had a Guy Pierce vibe going on for me. Oh, I could see that, yeah. His right-hand man is Professor Grost, who is a hunchback and an expert on all forms of vampirism. He really reminded me of a Del Toro character. Early on in the movie, Kronos comes across a woman in the woods being held in a pillory and frees her and lets her come along with him. And this is one of my few problems with the movie. He seems to let her come along with him basically just because she's hot. And she doesn't really serve another purpose in the movie as it goes on, other than delivering a little bit of exposition that we could have gotten anyway if she wasn't there. She serves as the bait at the end, too. The characters could easily have done what they did without her being there. She doesn't do anything other than serve as a minor distraction for the villains. That's true. When they rescued her, I initially expected her to keep getting in the way and Kronos not wanting her there, kind of like an Indiana Jones type thing, but that was not the case. I suppose you'll be moving on now. No, I'm staying. If you'll have me. Oh, I'll have you. <laughs> and that was when I was like, oh, okay. Not the way I was expecting it was going to go. She's played by Caroline Monroe, who is in a lot of genre movies of the period, including Dracula 80, 1972, the abominable Dr. Fibes movies, At the Earth's Core, Star Crash. Seeing modern interviews with her, she seems like a really intelligent and nice person who wanted to have a genuine acting career. So it's unfortunate that almost all of her roles are just the hot girl. I mean, even in the Dr. Fibes movies, I don't think she ever has any lines because she's just playing a corpse. Yeah, it's too bad she was so hot. <laughs> her acting is good. Yeah, she's a good actress when she has a chance to do something. She just usually is just kind of standing there. To her credit, she refused to ever do nudity. And even in this movie, which she probably comes the closest in this movie, she said she was wearing skin-colored underwear and she had her hair taped to her chest. And the shadows still covered up most of her body. Yeah. Good for her. Strong female protagonist <laughs> who just took her clothes off. I wish Dr. Marcus had done more. It initially seemed like he was going to do a lot. I could understand that, but I, I thought one of the coolest scenes in the movie was when he was turning into a vampire and they were trying to figure out what type of vampire he was and what kind of problem they were dealing with. I thought that was one of the funniest parts of the movie. <laughs> I did. Yeah, no, I could see I could see that. Yeah, there is some humor in this movie that's thankfully understated. Marcus's death montage was funny to me. I also liked when the bad guys paid someone to kill Kronos. And Kronos was antagonizing him. To make sport of a physical affliction is both impolite and cruel. After all, I wouldn't dream of calling you Ratface. Fatty. Or oh, Big Mouth. Ratface looks just like Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> During the big climactic scene where Kronos is fighting the big bad guy, he initially climbed up into a window on the second floor and ran down. And while he's in the middle of this fight and the tension is super high, we finally see Gross to make it through the same window like 10 minutes later. And he just gets down he's like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> the action in this movie is well choreographed and it's well shot. Way better than I would have ever expected for a movie like this. There's some really good sword fighting in this movie. It really feels like they're trying to hit each other and not just trying to hit their marks. Nothing's overly flashy or just for the sake of looking cool. Well... No, yeah, that's that's not true. They do jump up on a table at one point for no reason. Yeah, and then the way he swings around like both swords when he's fighting those guys in the graveyard. Oh, the Batman Begins fight? I was like, oh, it's like fucking Batman Begins, where the quick editing is hoping to conceal the fact that that scene doesn't make any sense the way it's presented. <laughs> that's true. I guess I was thinking more of the ending fight scene, the real big fight scene. Well, that one was awesome. But even those other ones, they're really cool. They It feels like a moment that it builds up to... And then there's a genuine payoff. Even when people got attacked, the scene cuts were really good. They didn't hold too long. It's good editing. And they do a really good job of making the antagonist genuinely menacing. In some of these movies, like even the ones with Christopher Lee, it's just Christopher Lee with fangs. There's no mystery. There's no tension. It's just, oh, he's going to bite this girl. But in this movie, you don't know exactly what's happening. There were lots of really cool shots throughout the entire movie. They were very intentional and they really worked. The character reveals are really good without being too corny. They're shot really well. This movie was written and directed by Brian Clements, and this is the only movie he ever directed. And it's a shame that he never got a chance to do a sequel to this movie, because that could have been really cool. If Their original plan was to have this be kind of a new franchise, but they were 
doing so poorly by that point that nothing came of it, unfortunately. Most of the movie, I would say, takes place outside. I was very impressed at how well they handled that. Like it would be in the woods or outside of houses or in cemeteries, and it was actually outside, which is a lot harder to shoot than in a studio pretending to be outside. That's true, and that's a good point, because a lot of times when movies from this period have scenes outside, it just feels like generic shots of the woods and stuff, like nobody really thought about where to put the camera. They just said, we need these people in the frame, and that's it. But this movie's a lot better made than that. I thought it was interesting that the Durward's son, Paul, the doorbell keeps ringing. He goes, where the devil is Barlow? I thought it was interesting that in a vampire movie, that guy's name was Barlow. I looked that up to see if Stephen King was referencing this or something, but I couldn't find anything. There's going to be some spoilers here, so if you want to watch this movie, skip to this time code. I can't believe I'm actually doing that, but I'm going to do that. Some of the stuff toward the end, I thought was kind of dumb. The fact that the mother turns out to be wearing a mask, and nobody ever looked at it and said, you're wearing a mask. How do they not notice that she's wearing a mask? When I saw it, I said, wow, that makeup isn't very good. And it turns out it's because it's not makeup, it's a mask. Yeah, I guess it's what you're Yeah, and it looks dumb. At the end, the mother, when she reveals herself to be the one behind everything... She also explains everything to her kids and then says, I'm going to erase your memories. What did she explain everything for? I know she did it so the audience would know what was going on and so Kronos would know what was going on. But in the context of the movie itself, it doesn't make sense for her to do that. Despite my complaints there, the movie still ends well. It comes to a good conclusion. It has a lot of action at the end and ends up being a satisfying movie. I liked how the whole movie was outside of the normal expected Hammer movie vampire fare. It was not what I was expecting seeing other vampire hammer movies it was very actiony in a good way and in all the scenes inside the big rich people house i kept waiting for it to turn into jojo's bizarre adventure because we're talking about rich people back in that time period and vampires captain chrono's vampire hunter a very cool movie that's not what you would expect hearing the title i thought it was gonna be one kind of movie then reading up on it and seeing it was a hammer horror movie about vampires i expected something else but i was wrong on both counts but I turned out to really enjoy this one. I'm glad I watched it. 